Well, good morning and hello all. Uh, back in the wheelhouse and uh, you can see it's empty again with the engine bay opened up. That's because the engine still leaks oil. Well, the engine doesn't leak oil. I put it back in and I got it running. Everything sounded great, ran beautifully, uh, except the build's filled with oil. Um, Dang, what on earth? I thought maybe the oil pan was shot, something, who knows what. Anyway, the oil was red, thank goodness. Uh, which means it's transmission fluid. The uh, Borg Warner Velvet Drive transmission back here, I don't know if you can see it here in this light, um, uses automatic transmission fluid. So the nice thing about that is that it's a marker. Um, if it's red, I know it's coming from the transmission. And because I put that really neat uh, vent hose down to the drain of the bell housing, I was able to use my vacuum pump and uh, suck up the oil from the bell housing, which was actually leaking out into the bilge because it's not a watertight um, area, and it was red automatic transmission fluid. So I know that the front seal on the transmission is leaking. Um, it may not have been leaking really bad before because probably the previous owner had run heavy oil, like 90 weight or God knows what, in there. And automatic transmission fluid kind of has a habit of cleaning things. Um, so it may have actually just cleaned up any gunk on the seal and allowed it to leak out. But it did expose that the seal really needs to be replaced. It took me a while to find a seal, but I got one. And it's very simple. It looks just like a hub seal from a Land Rover, to tell you the truth. A uh, tiny little rubber one-lip seal. Um, but to do it, the engine's got to come back out. <laughs> ah! um, they also, I couldn't get perfect alignment between the... Um, transmission flange and the prop shaft flange. The front of the engine had to go down just a little bit more and it can't because it's sitting on the uh, floors. Uh, in boat terms, floors are not the thing you walk around, they're called a sole. Floors are actually the beams that support the floors, or in this case, uh, support um, just cross over between the ribs because uh, they're not really supporting the, uh, the sole. Anyway, it just needs to be trimmed out just a little bit more so the front of the engine can drop down just a little bit. Um, which tells me that it really never had good alignment, which is surprising, but maybe with these old boats and these long prop shafts and slow turning uh, props it wasn't that crucial, but I'd like it to be just a little bit better. So anyway, it does give me the opportunity to uh, to tidy that up just a little bit. That's a shame because everything was in and gasketed and flanged and hoses were all on. I'm going to try and pull it with all the oil hoses uh, intact uh, because there's quite a few and it would be a pain to drain all that oil out, especially because there's four plus gallons of oil in here. Anyway, time to rebuild the gantry, which I'm really not looking forward to, uh, and uh, get the come-alongs in here and haul this thing back out. Cheers. I haven't shot any video during the hauling of the engine because, I mean, really, you just watched this from the previous clips, and uh, it wasn't really all that exciting. I'm getting good at it. <laughs> anyway, so I've just pulled the transmission off, and other than the fact that it's an ugly, rusty, uh, mess in there. Uh, this should be a fairly easy job. Underneath all that red rust is the front seal. I must say having just a spline and six bolts certainly makes it easy to take this on and off. It wasn't even all that heavy. But you can see there's been a lot of water in here for a long time. Hmm. Yuck. Anyway, let's uh, let's just do it and hope it gets better. Cheers. Well, I can't say this is good news. I got the seal out. Using the old technique of driving the screw in and uh, yanking it out with the screw, but it's pretty evident when you look inside at the shaft, and I sort of suspected this, uh, that what's happened, there's so much rust on this shaft that it just chewed the inside lip of the seal completely to pieces. Um, so one would hope maybe I could clean the worst of this rust off and the part of the shaft that actually rides against the best part of the lip of the seal is still in okay shape. But I think that might be grasping at straws just a little. Problem is my daughters arrive in a few days for the Christmas holidays and I gotta put this all back together and end the floor. And I can't afford a new transmission. So I'm gonna clean the shaft up the best I can. And I'm gonna put the seal on as far in as I possibly can and uh, we'll know what happens. Cheers. Okay, well I've done it. I got the seal back in. Shaft cleaned up really quite nicely. Um, what I did too, I measured very carefully how deep I could put the seal in. So what I did, I was able to put the seal in about um, eighth 
eighth to three sixteenths, eighth, let's say a strong eighth, further down the shaft, uh, onto a really, really clean part of the shaft. And um, hopefully that will give me a much better chance for the survival of this seal. In fact, I'm really quite confident about this. The, the shaft felt really good that far in. Of course, a little uh, Hylomar around the outside of the seal from my Land Rover heritage. Well, let's, as they say, button this up. Um, I still have a few things to do. I gotta cut a little bit of clearance around, as I said when I started this uh, this project today, around some of the flow. Well, actually, I gotta run the sump pump because the build from I've got it turned off right now, and you can't really see what's going on down there. But I do have to cut some small clearances around some of the floors, which are the beams uh, that cross over from rib to rib. In fact, I think the engine might have been sitting on one of them because it, the top of it looks a little ground up, and I'll be able to tell by looking at the bottom of the oil pan. Anyway, uh, that's pretty promising. I have a brand new fine tool, my old fine tool, bit the biscuit. I'll show you what a fine tool is soon if you don't know. They are awesome. Okay, let's get to it. Cheers. Hi there. Well, I've called it a day. Uh, the engine is basically ready to put back in. The transmission is back on. I don't know if you can see in this limited light, uh, but it is down there. Uh, I feel, as I said, really good about the seal. I uh, set it in a little deeper on um, a pretty clean piece of shaft. Uh, I'm going to do a little work to the floor, uh, floors down there, the beams that are underneath the engine, uh, but that's a good job for tomorrow. As I'm uh, bashing around the boat uh, this weekend, which is pretty convenient seeing as the boat's kind of in turmoil, I'm having a pretty lightweight dinner here by myself and uh, a really yummy uh, meat pie of duck and sour cherry. I had a third of it last night, I'm going to have two thirds of it tonight because I'm hungry. Anyway, a little wine. A little meat pie, a little candlelight, uh, life aboard, it's quite something. How are the boys doing? As I mentioned, I was really very pleased to be able to fly both my daughters out um, to Victoria for the holidays. Uh, here's the classic uh, getting the Christmas tree shot, followed by the classic pancake breakfast shot. Yes, dads are funny that way. They always want those same old pictures. And here we are at uh, Christmas dinner, uh, which was wonderful. It was really great to have them with me for a couple of uh, couple of days, well, over a week actually, and, uh, and I miss them when they're not around. Mm -hmm. 